I remember going to a show of a very famous comedian, it was a 3,000 seat theater in Boston, and the comedian was just this tall in a little spotlight, and I'm in the back, and I'm going like, what the f is this? Like, I should just be listening to this on a CD or something. But I thought like, if I can ever get to a point where I can play theaters, I'm gonna use this space. I'm gonna use, look at all these, I'm gonna be, look, look at those, look at that rig up there. I mean, look at this place, like this place could be bumping. It's theater, it really is theater. Can I get some uh, mood lighting, please? Just perfect. Uh... <laughs> I, I don't feel at home in the world of stand-up. I like the people in it, but like when I would go to a comedy club, I'd be like, what is, like this place is not for me. It was always sort of trying to wrestle the things I loved about theater into stand-up, which was, you know, staging and lighting and things like that. <laughs> I would just go to a venue and, okay, I have an idea that I want to black out in a spotlight here, yeah. so I'd have to sort of wrestle the show technically mm. every night, given what was in yeah. the space we were. I cried myself to sleep. All right. <laughs> I, uh, the microphone wasn't even on, it worked. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, that was almost a nightmare. I wanted to build a show and write a show for the space of a theater, a show that couldn't be done in a smaller space. Writing the bits with the lighting in mind. All right, now right brain, you're being insane. No left brain, I'm just being alive. And that bit was really like, I saw David Hasselhoff, a performance of him doing Jekyll and Hyde, the musical, and it's him being like, come on Jekyll, I won't do that. No, never, yes, forever, God damn you Hyde. And it's all these light switches and it was just beautiful. You see stand up in 3000 seat theaters, you see them in arenas and it's the exact same thing that would yeah. be done in a comedy club except yeah. it just blown up and you go to arena shows and you're like just watching a guy talk and you're just watching the television. It's like man this form is like limitless yeah. really. It's put into such a silly silly box. The whole point was like we're gonna work on the technical aspects of the show and the jokes all at the same time. We're gonna test this show on the road mm -hmm. as a technical thing in 1500 seat theaters. We spent two weeks in a little garage with the full lighting setup before the show, after the show, we would sit down and go, okay, that light, that didn't totally work. We would change lighting cues. We would, you know, test the lighting cue like a joke. One, two, three, four. So I was at the dentist the other day. <laughs> the other thing was you introduce some film language and you actually do it like a, a movie and not just like a taped performance. There are pickups all over the show. The country song, there's a dolly thing that goes on the front of the stage. If you pay attention, you'll realize, well, a camera can't be there. The big sort of push, crane push when all the lights come down and I go down. There is a minute and a half of that last bit. This film without an audience there. Take its tomahawk if we break it down. I went to Kanye West recent tour, the Yeezus tour. It was a big dramatic theatrical show. I have always been a fan of him deeply conceptually. I think he, he has an incredible approach to the theatricality of live performance and arena performance. He tackles arena performance in a way no one else does. He has a really, really economic use of lighting, monochromatic lighting. The St. Pablo tour, this last one, I directed uh, Chris Rock's last special, ripped off that look for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is, it's just ripping off the St. Pablo monochromatic sort of incandescent <laughs> light for that. There's also, you know, factors in it that are just very unique to what it is, which is lighting specifically lighting an audience, how visible are they? Specials visually are, it's a very low bar to clear to be better than the average one. Every stand-up special looks to me like Conan live from the Chicago theater. You get to a taping of a special and it's all this production put onto a hour of comedy that's never been like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's purple lights and all this stupid shit. And it's like, it makes no sense. We made Sherrod Carmichael's special. <laughs> one thing I wanted to do is try to make a stand-up special that was alive <laughs> cinematically, you know, like where the camera movement and the angles and the texture of the the light and the shadows meant something. That the way the audience was lit meant something. The way that it was shot meant something. What I liked about it was, you know, this is a very lonely experience for me up there. That's what it feels like. It feels like lonely and anxious. And it feels like a, a silly version of what I feel like a lot of people go through. Hey guys, Kayla back here with another video. The movie's about Kayla, a 13-year-old girl in her last week of eighth grade. Me and my DP, we tested before we even had money for the movie. Like, how do we film screens practically? We wanted to film them practically. For me, the stupid thing is like, I hate like when people are tweeting in movies and the tweet like shows up yeah. superimposed. That, mm -hmm. That's when it gets like corny and weird to me. And like a close-up of a shattered phone to me looks like gorgeous, you know, it looks like very interesting and cool. It was all interesting to me and significant to me. I think probably it's uncinematic to people that maybe don't 
view it emotionally. When you see people my age and younger that are gonna start to be able to express themselves in, in film or other mediums, I think you'll start to see the internet talked about more emotionally and personally. Barry Lyndon writing a letter by candlelight's the most cinematic thing in the world, but like a girl on her phone in the dark, which literally is the candle and the letter are fused. She's got the cold light on her, the cold white light of her phone, and he's always in the doorway with the warm yeah. light of yeah. that, which is then sort of the warm light of the dining room table, which is the same as the sort of light of the fire. I mean, I found it always cinematic. I didn't really understand the sort oh, sure. of phobia for it. Like, it's a light source. I don't think you can be too proud of the special. It's amazing. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. I think it looks cool. I can vouch for it on mute fully. <laughs> I can show it to someone on mute and be like, I'm, this is exactly how I pictured it on mute. Uh, I think it looks cool. Uh, sound man. Light man. Uh, we need some rocking lights right now. This is your chance to redeem yourself. Rocking lights, don't fuck it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche, my man. 